up here and start talking about kazoo solos. And then I was like, it's fucking prog rock, what's the point? <laughs> so, so, but uh, before I start, music. The Von Herson Brothers, all the way from Finland. And, um... Yeah. Please give big, warm, big round of applause for Von Herson Brothers. Yeah. Right, so, uh, good evening. Welcome to the fourth annual Progressive Rock Awards. Uh, brought to you by Prog Magazine, presented by Orange Amplification in association with Currencies.co.uk. Um, first of all, thank you all very much for coming. It means a hell of a lot to us. Um, after the incredible success of last year's event here, um, we were actually massively oversubscribed with people hoping to attend uh, this year's awards, and it was a real struggle to, to fit everyone in uh, to the venue this evening. Speaking as someone that actually had to squeeze himself into this suit this evening, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, seriously, um, there's a lot of thanks that need to go out here um, tonight. My excellent editorial team, um, event organiser John O'Sullivan, Team Rock's superb commercial and marketing teams, the Team Rock powers that be, and most importantly, all our sponsors tonight, Without your unwavering belief and support, we simply would not be here to celebrate in the auspicious, auspicious fashion progressive music and the way that it deserves to be celebrated tonight. So please, a round of applause to all of you. I was, I was listening to the radio the other morning and a piece came on, they were discussing uh, magazine sales and the, sort of the downward trend of some of them. Um, but what they talked about was wedding magazines and how they've sort of bucked the trend and, and that they're up in, in the current uh, state of the market. And I thought that was kind of interesting. And I thought, I was going to bring that up. And then I thought, oh shit, we've got Waitman in the room tonight, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that's ever spent five minutes with the man will know that he's had at least four weddings, <laughs> currently three divorces. I think my mathematics was correct at 7.01 p.m. this evening. And, um, and, I, and then I thought, oh, bloody hell, he's had at least as many heart attacks as he had divorces. So if I take this train of thought, we might set him off again. We don't need that this evening. <laughs> but um, on a more serious note, the reason for discussing trends in magazine sales um, is that Prog Magazine joins those raft of bridal magazines in bucking the trend of the moment. And over the past 12 months at least, each issue that we've released has performed on percentage way above the year-on-year trend, year year trend for magazine sales. On top of that, uh, our subscriptions are growing at an enormous rate. Um, we're on digital, we're online, we're across social media, and of course the Prog Magazine radio show with Philip Wilding. Prog's got it covered at the moment. <laughs> In addition, uh, this morning you may have heard on the radio or seen in the press that in conjunction with the official charts company, we announced the inaugural Progressive Albums chart, a top ten of which I, I hope you can see behind me. Uh, the, the full top 30 you can read in the uh, brand new issue of Prog, which is in your goodie bags, or you can see it at the back of the room. Um, I have to say, um, it's great to see the likes of Stephen Wilson, uh, Public Service Broadcasting, Tim Boness, all in the room tonight, featuring in that first top 30. It may have taken the best part of 45 years since progressive music first made its mark, but I believe this move shows an increased awareness by the mainstream media of the wonders of progressive music, and the fact that while prog has always blended other musical genres into its main frame, in today's world it offers something genuinely, genuinely unique and appealing to the modern music fan put off by the blandness of much of today's so-called popular music. I have to refer back, I'm afraid, to that irascible old rogue Wakeman, <laughs> who actually said, Prog is a bit like pornography, a guilty pleasure for many, admitted only by a few, not anymore. <laughs> Sadly, however, it hasn't all been great news. This year, we have lost some amazing and much-loved characters from the progressive world, and I'd like to take a minute or two to remember those no longer with us. <clears throat> On the 
Obviously, Chris Squire's passing has left a void near impossible to fill. And in con conjunction with Yes, we felt the least we could do was to rename the Virtuoso Award in honour of him, so it will now be known as the Chris Squire Virtuoso Award, as a mark of our respect to this fantastic character and musician. I'd like... I'd like to present a, a short film that has very kindly been put together by a great friend of uh, Chris's, John Brewer, who uh, has worked with Chris for over 45 years. Um, John's not an easy man to shut up, but I think we find, you'll find we did our best here. But uh, this is something John put together, and John, thank you very much for doing so. Chris Quar was an inspiration to me and to many. And I feel extremely fortunate to have been able to call him my friend for so many years. It's hard to imagine a future without him, and his passing truly marks the end of an era. Thank you, Chris. Happy trails. There's a guy at the end of the bar. It's called Chris Squire. He's a bass player. Why don't you go and say hello, you know? You might have something in common. So I went over to see him and, uh, and that was it. A bass player who basically winds all the middle and bass off of his amp and he's, he's just treble and plays it like a lead guitar. A mate of mine who had been trained in classical guitar came to me in the school and he said, oh yeah, you, you know quite a lot about music, Chris, you know, uh, do, shall we form a group? And I said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And he said, well, you're tall and you've got big hands, you play bass. And I went, okay. So that's how I started to play bass guitar. The flowery Rickenbacker and, and, and Chris with all these scarves you know, dangling off of his elbows and his wrists. And Chris was like, ooh, 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 all over the place. That was hot. You know, obviously, an amazing bass player and just. Uh, a character in himself. But I'm a great believer in the, the way the cogs turn, new opportunities arise, and uh, you know, uh, new horizons are seen. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chris Squire. Thank you. And so to the awards themselves, I can tell you this evening promises to be our best ever. There's been a terrific and wide-reaching array of nominees this year, and as you will see, some more than deserving winners tonight. The continued aura of excellence that pervades the music made by each one makes our job on Prog Magazine one of the best in the world. And finally, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our host for this evening. I've known this guy for about 20 years. In the early days, when he'd asked me to feed him scurrilous stories of the rock stars of the day. He managed to redeem himself by introducing me to the music of Frank Zappa. He featured in the very first issue of Prog Magazine and remains the same cheery bloke and passionate music fan today he was back then. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Matthew Wright. Uh, as you gather, my name is Matthew Wright. It is an honour uh, to be with you all tonight, it really is. And if you're wondering why you got me, 
Well, uh, it might have something to do with my occasional appearances with Hawkwind, but I suspect it's probably got more to do with my fee. I am a lot, lot cheaper than Brian Pern. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing as we're uh, sitting directly beneath uh, Shakespeare's Globe, or the replica of Shakespeare's Globe, it seems only fitting that I begin proceedings with a nod to the great man's oeuvre. So, friends, Romans, Progsters, lend me your ears. If only so we can get the Prog 2015 Awards officially underway. And if you think about it, the Globe is a truly fitting venue for an event as prestigious as this. For it's no secret that the Bard, the Great Bard, was a huge fan of music, and I would suggest Prog music. Why else would he have named one of his plays Twelfth Night? That's all I'm saying. Now, of course, it was Twelfth Night, the play, not the band, uh, they gave us the, the classic line, if music be the food of love, play on. That was a, a classic speech thing we'll all remember from school. Although I personally prefer Duke Vincentio's uh, pronouncement in Measure for Measure, that music oft have such a charm to make bad good, and good provoke to harm. Shakespeare was clearly no fool, and despite living, what, 500 odd years ago, recognised back then the power of music to transform our mood, to elevate our consciousness, to stir our very souls. That said, I have a sneaking suspicion that our finest ever playwright wasn't thinking of the latest 1D album or the Spice Girls' greatest hits when he was writing that. I believe that Shakespeare would have been more than happy to see the Globe play host to progressive music's biggest stars this evening, and I'm going to tell you why, and this time I'm serious. How many times have we heard how plays, his plays are too hard for uh, school kids to understand these days, let alone enjoy. This despite the fact that uh, many of the 16th century issues that he addressed back then are as relevant now as they were in the Renaissance. That would of course be the era, not the band, marvellous pog band reformed recently. <laughs> Just pointing it out. I guess to uh, fully appreciate the inability of Hamlet to avenge his father or to understand how jealousy could consume someone of such nobility as Othello, you have to apply yourself, you have to put a bit of effort in. The more you give Shakespeare's plays, the more you get out of them. And I would suggest you could say exactly the same about progressive music. The compositions may be a tad more complicated than I tell you what I want, what I really, really want, think of that guy. Uh, the melodies may be at times a uh, fraction more obtuse. Uh, like Frank Staff, my favourite word, that obtuse. Uh, but pity those who turn their noses up and sneer without first putting in a bit of effort, because boy, are they missing out. Yes, progressive rock does tend to feature slightly lengthier pieces, though as far as I know, nothing as long as one of Shakespeare's plays. There are often complex time and key changes, more sophisticated arrangements that don't even get me started on some of the high concepts you can find on prog albums, old and new. Some people may mock, but I suspect they're the same ones who would slag off Shakespeare. They're ignorant cultural savages, one and all. The most marvellous thing about these awards, I think, is that they give a voice back to many artists, a voice that maybe have been denied them for 10, 20, 30 years or maybe more. The success of Prog Magazine under Jerry Young's stewardship has proven, if proof were needed, that there's still a large and growing audience for all the wonderful music that you've given us, are giving us and will give us still. What's more, I don't know, this isn't going to be controversial, what's more, I think while previous Prog Awards, I, I do think it's fair to say, it's tended to favour maybe older acts. This year, it's clear from the nominations, at least, that things are changing, and there are many more contemporary bands uh, coming to the fore, which is great, because it ensures a future for the music. And in preparing for this evening, uh, jerry has been sending me uh, a fair, fair few albums I hadn't heard before, and I've had a joyous time, I really have. Uh, one final thing uh, before we kick off, uh, I also wanted to doff my hat uh, to a few people. Dave Brock from Hawkins who's not here tonight, unfortunately. Uh, Orange, one of the sponsors, Peter Ace, all the sponsors. And uh, following on from uh, that moving tribute to Chris Squire, I'd also like to doff my flying teapot badge uh, to the late David Allen. Uh, yeah, miss him still. So let's get on with this show then, shall we? We're going to kick off with the uh, Limelight Award. It's sponsored by Aquariva Tequila. Thank you very much for that, Theo <laughs> Rockus. Uh, this is an award which basically it bigs up new bands, bands that have featured in the magazine's Limelight column over the past 12 months. Let's have a look uh, who's in contention. Hi. Maybe she will. Dream the 
electric steel. So there you go, those are the top three, and to name the winner and uh, hand over the award, let's uh, bring back Mr. Jerry Yu. Thank you. This, uh, for Prog Magazine, is perhaps the most important award of the evening because this is the future. It's the future of the music, and it's the future of the magazine. Obviously, we're here to celebrate great careers, but as I said, this is incredibly important to Prog Magazine. The winner, very deserving, Heinz. you always try, you think one day maybe I'll be the kind of person that can achieve this, but it's not really true for a lot of people. Um, so it's a huge honour to do this. We're, we're a bunch of guys, we've been friends for what, 10, 12 years now? Um, just writing music without any agenda, just wanting to write the things that matter to us that we find really interesting and explore those ideas. And to have this kind of recognition means, well, a lot. So. Thank you very much. I love the album. I love the name as well. It's just awesome. Right, let's crack straight on to uh, the Storm Thorgerson Grand Design Award. Uh, this is sponsored by K-Scope. Um, I think it goes without saying that these days, uh, design it goes way more than sort of a cool, trippy cover. And uh, the way uh, albums and music is packaged now can really enhance uh, the listener experience. Uh, so let's find out uh, who the arty dodgers may be. The top three. Yes. Stephen Wilson, Hand Cannot Erase. Pink Floyd, The Endless River. The Endless River is a continuous flow of music that builds gradually over four separate pieces over the 55 odd minutes. There we go. Well, the winner, all I can say is if the packaging don't get you, the 5.1 surround sound mix certainly will. It's uh, Stephen Wilson, Hank cannot be wrong. Thank you very much, and thank you to the. Re I guess this is a readers' voted one, isn't it? Thank you very much to the readers. Um, this is absolutely not my award, and that's not false modesty, because even though the stupid idea in the first place may have been mine, I have no visual ability whatsoever. So I would like to thank you on behalf of the photographer, Lassa Hoyle, the designer, Carl Glover and the illustrator, Haya Mola. So thanks very much on behalf of me. Thank you. <laughs> now, our next award uh, has been brought forward because the recipient has got a train to catch. How <laughs> fucking rock and roll is that? <laughs> It's called the Outer Limits Award, and it's to reward 
I think it's a, it's a brilliant it's a brilliant trophy to have. It's to reward those artists who may not easily fit into any of Prog's infinite number of subgenres, and heaven knows I've been catching up on a few of them, the symphonic, whatever, psychedelic. But it's nevertheless it's it goes to someone who we still think has Prog in their very soul. Uh, to present the award, a good friend of mine and one of the sponsors this evening, Mr. Peter Ellis. Matthew. Um, tonight's award for The Outer Limits, the second, the second time that I've actually done this, is for someone that I consider to be um, the cornerstone of uh, the British music industry. Um, he's been around for as long as I can possibly remember. Um, he's transcended many genres, which is what this award is all about. Um, he's done progressive rock, of course, jazz, fusion, symphonic rock, art rock, Glam rock and of course pop. But probably Jive Bunny. I'm not allowed to say that. Well, I didn't say that, okay? <laughs> um, but probably one of the most important one of the most important parts um, that I want to speak about is his appearance, uh, sorry, his playing, his 45 uh, single on the uh, Radio 1 when it uh, opened on in 1967. His was the first single to be played and it was Flowers in the Rain. Yet, <laughs> a few months later, he went on tour, and, and this really does show how much he has transcended these genres. He went on tour with Amen Corner, The Nice, Pink Floyd, and Jimi Hendrix. Right? And um, that, for me, is an amazing, I mean, that liner for people all playing together with the move um, is absolutely incredible, and that's real choice of transcending of genres. So, um, without further ado, I'll move to the next page. <laughs> I'm not as fluid as Matthew, is it? Right. <laughs> right, he is a multi-instrumentalist, a musician, a singer-songwriter, record producer, composer and arranger. And certainly, I think he's a bit like a British version of Phil Spector without the nasty bits. So, without any further ado, please welcome to the stage, Mr Roy Woods. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've been involved in with a lot of musical styles throughout my uh, writing career, at least. Uh, but to be parachuted into a, a prog rock award is is something you know entirely different for me. And uh, you know, all I can say is thank you for listening to my stuff. You know, and uh, this really means a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah. Indeed. Exactly 27 minutes time. See you in the next one. Don't be late. We move now. Don't hold him back. He'll never get there. He's got to go. You've got to go. You've got to go. I know. <laughs> so we move on to the live event uh, sponsored by uh, Hi Fi Giants Kef. And of course, on the stage is where prog music comes alive. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's see who's at the top of their uh, musical game. Kate Bush before the dawn tour. Marillion Weekend. King Crimson's U.S. Tour. Okay, uh, to present the award, our guest presenter is uh, Mr. Pop Radio himself, Mr. Phil Wilding. Wow, youngest person here. 
you. That never happens. That's amazing. <laughs> Not true. Hello, good evening. How are you? Yeah. I didn't see you. I'm sorry. <laughs> good to see you all. Welcome. Except that. Thanks for coming. Good to see you too. Took a nice shot. I prefer Gavin. He's got a softer tone, but he's on holiday. What are you going to do? <laughs> Oh, he's the voice of Plumber News. I'm not judging. <laughs> Anywho, uh, I just want to say, uh, if, I, don't know if you, uh, I don't know if you know, you saw the Kate Bush show. She's not one, it's okay, it's fine. But uh, I don't know if you saw Kate Bush. It was, uh, it was sublime, it was wonderful, it was ridiculous. Apart from the second half. Now, there's an adage in show business that says, never put your kids on stage, Mrs. Bush. <laughs> Sadly, second half at the Hampstead Apollo, the boy Bush got up on stage. I'm not judging. I'm just saying he was dressed like a milkman and he had that acting skill set to match. <laughs> hey, a kid clearly needs work. I'm not saying anything. The second half of the show, Hamster Apollo sold a lot of cider. <laughs> it's okay, she hasn't won, she's not here. I checked. <laughs> this band, deserved winners, can I say. Lovely men all. One of them was once called me a twat at the Plog Awards, but that's all water under bridge now. The band that, keep, that keeps Centre Parks sexy. Ladies and gentlemen, the Williams Weekenders win. Come on. We are up against Kate Bush and King Crimson. Yeah, enough. Uh, extremely flattered, therefore, to have won this. Extremely uh, nervous to be in this room with the great and the good. You know who you are, have progressive rock. Um, I'd like to thank the, the, the friends, uh, our, our own friends who uh, did the votes. Um, our crew, of course, and the production people who made the video things work and the PA turn on. And, um, of course, a couple of girls here tonight, Lucy Jordash and Stephanie Bradley, who, uh, between the two of them, uh, set the whole weekends up. I think they had help somewhere, but they were basically in charge of it. Oh, I could see myself in here. Oh, it's a singer's paradise, this trophy. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks to everyone at Prog. Oh, hello, Matthew. Um, thanks for coming. Shit, I don't know what to say. It's great, isn't it? Lovely, thank you. Anybody else want to say anything? I think you covered it. Yeah. <laughs> what a great fucking band. That's what I'm <laughs> Voted, uh, Prog Music magazine readers uh, voted for it, but I can imagine a lot of people think Vanguard, what is the Vanguard Award? But it's very simple, it's for a new band who are not a new new band that didn't appear in the uh, limelight column that we discussed earlier. We got that? Right. <laughs> so, uh, let's find out who's, uh, who's on top. Lonely Robot. I am the morning. I didn't get the chance to be here last year and to meet Sonia Christina, which, uh, which cuts me deeply, but I'm delighted to say that uh, our winners tonight, just about to go on tour in the US, uh, supporting Ghost, and they are Person, carrying on the veil. Come on.
Well, thank you very much. God, it's heavier than I thought it would be. So, as a new band, but not a new new band, as he said. Exactly. Um, thank you very, very much, all of you. Um, I would like to take this moment to thank the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rick Wakeman especially. Um, Roy, if he's not gone. Um, there you are. Hello. Thank you. Um, all of you, thank you very much. Um, and I would like to thank Team Rock and Prog, all of, the, all of the team there, and also our fabulous label and our fabulous management, Dante, Spine Farm and Tony. We move on now to the anthem, uh, sponsored by Roadrunner Records, again, uh, voted for by uh, Prog readers, as opposed to the uh, Prog jury of editorial staff and uh, friends and relations. Uh, anthem is just a posh way of saying best, uh, best song, I suppose, so it's the best single cut from a Prog record released in the last 12 months. Uh, so let's, be, let's see who's been uh, hitting the right note uh, with Prog fans. Public service broadcasting again. We're about to be made. Big, big train. Watch this. Steve Hackett. Love song to a vampire. Well, the uh, album is uh, The Race for Space. The winning track is Gagarin. It's public service broadcasting. <laughs> This is uh, extremely surprising and very nice. Um, yeah, Prog have been behind us for quite a while, and uh, uh, as with most things to do with us, I don't really know why, but um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll keep it short and sweet, I suppose, but thank you very much. It's very nice, and uh, yeah. Anything to add? Uh, just, just what he said. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we move on now uh, to the prestigious Album of the Year Award. It's uh, sponsored by Cherry Red Records, Esoteric Recordings, and again voted for by Prog Readers. How we came upon a winner here, I do not know, because there have been so many great albums that have come out in the past 12 months. Uh, so let's have a look at the top three. Open. Hail Communion. Pink Floyd, The Endless River. Stephen Wilson, and Cannot Erase. Well, to uh, act as guest presenter today, we have a comic and a musician, but I don't think you'd like to be called a comic musician. It's Matt Berry. Come on up, Matt. been told to be very quick, so that's what I will be. It's a huge honour, to be honest. Uh, Chief Parker, Miss Sweden, isn't that weird? 
Um, brass tacks, right. So the winner of the 2015 Prague Album of the Year goes to... Hand Cannot Erase by Stephen Wilson. Hey Jerry, you know all those guys that write into your magazine complaining that I get too much coverage? Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> Good luck with that, mate. Yeah. No, thank you so much. And actually, it's a real honour to be presented by Matt because Toast to London, funniest comedy show for a long time. And by the way, Matt is going to be doing this, he's going to be my special guest at the Royal Albert Hall later this month. Get your tickets, kids. September the, tw uh, I don't even know what the date is. Where's my PR guy? Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. There he is over there. Band of the Year, sponsored by Team Rock, again voted for by Prog Magazine readers. So, should we just get Stephen Wilson back up now? No, we won't. Instead, uh, we will have a look at the runners and riders. <laughs> Stephen Wilson. Well, the winners, straight out of Sweden, 25 years at the game. I would say Pale Communion is their best album so far. It's certainly been the most commercially successful in the UK, I think, uh, top 15. Uh, welcome, Opeth. And um, Mike couldn't be here today, but he wants us to send his great thanks to Jerry and the staff at Prague. And um, we also would like to thank our manager, Andy Farrow, at Northern Music, Ooh. and our label, Roadrunner, and Michel Kerr, and our crew, and also, of course, all the people who voted for us. So, truly grateful for this. Do you like that, Miss Sweden? <laughs> Swedish, yeah? Tack. <laughs> I learned that watching Nordic Noir. That is the beginning, the middle, and the end of my entire Scandic language lesson. <laughs> now, Curveball. The Commercial Breakthrough Award, which uh, those of you that have, uh, have actually read the programmes that Jerry painstakingly put together will know is a one-off award. It's never been uh, given out before. Uh, it's a very special award, and here to tell us why uh, is Martin Talbot, Chief Executive of the Official Chart Company, of course, now producing the Prog Album Review. Come on up, Martin. So, we know what this usually means. This is usually a last minute award, which is thrown in because somebody hasn't won an award. Um, except this isn't what this award is about. It's a very special award, and it's a very important award. Um, you've heard about the chart, the, um, the Progressive Albums chart, which is going to be launching uh, in the next couple of weeks, and, and well, you've heard all about it, and it's in your, in your goodie bag. Um, this artist is actually what, what, what that chart is all about. It's about artists who can break through um, from the heartland of progressive music into the mainstream, and who can who can you know, move to a to, to a different a different kind of um, space if you if you like. 
This is an artist who over 28 years, and more recently as a solo artist, has actually forged commercial success and truly broken through from the progressive um, field at a time actually when few in the media were really paying much attention to progressive music. Um, his career sales are more than 300,000 albums in the UK alone. His solo career um, has continued uh, over the last seven years and has taken him into new areas again. Every single one of his albums has progressed, it's sold more, it's got higher in the official albums chart in the UK, um, leading up to his most recent album, um, which climaxed uh, early this year with a top 20. Um, his album was Hand Cannot Erase. He's been up here already uh, three times. Um, <laughs> it's Stephen Wilson. <laughs> I was just backstage giving my interview for having won the best. I don't know what this award is. What is it? <laughs> Have you just made that award up, Jerry? Yes. <laughs> I don't remember that one last time. Why not? Well, th guys, thank you so much. This is uh, this is almost absurd and really good luck. Actually, you know what? I'd like to get Nick Beggs up on stage. Nick, come on. I'm very fortunate to have an amazing band with me that make me look much better than I really am. And Nick. We'll take his clothes off if I ask him to. <laughs> no, I don't really stick no. no, Nick, uh, I'd like to share this with me. Um, commercial breakthrough. Thank you so much. What does it mean? It means what? It means I'm going to be on top of the pops. <laughs> yeah, Jules Holland. Can I look forward to that? Okay. No, really, guys, thank you so much. Nick, I'm going to give that to you. There you go. Thank you.